Hello. Here we are today in the Alberton Cemetery, just outside Port Adelaide, South Australia. The local council restored it as the Pioneer Park, which it is today, in 1990, with most of the gravestones cleared. Just a few on a memorial in the centre of the park left to show that about 3,000 people are buried here. There's a playground here now, but children have played here while it was still a cemetery. There's a strange, sad feeling to the site. It's quite concealed, with a main approach up a small stairway and a secondary entrance on the western side. Otherwise, it is surrounded by houses. The syringe box in the public toilet on the site was smashed open, and there was evidence that somebody had been sleeping rough behind some of the play equipment. This was the first burial ground in the Port Adelaide district, before the later and bigger Cheltenham Cemetery was opened a couple of miles away. Four acres of land was donated in November 1847, when it was surrounded on three sides by salt swamp. Gradually, the seawater was held back and the swamp filled in and turned into a suburb of cottages and gardens. Many early pioneers were buried here. The first recorded burial was that of Thomas Cleveland, Bosun of the Canton, who drowned while drunk at the age of 40 in October 1846, before the land was officially a cemetery. Many of the early burials were of people who drowned or died while intoxicated. The seventh burial was of a William Buist, a 22-year-old seaman of the Princess Royal, who died in a drunken riot and a fray with the police in June of 1848. There was once a Church of England rectory adjoining the cemetery. The cemetery was closed for new leases in January 1874, although existing leases still received burials for many years after. The signs at the cemetery here say the last burial was in 1930, but they're inaccurate. The last burial was that of Miss Mary Ann Moore of Glenelg, buried on March 16, 1942. The church transferred control of the cemetery to the Port Adelaide Council in 1936. A sailor, John War, on board the Galatea, died in 1867 and was buried here. Among the ship's company who marched in the funeral cortege from Port Adelaide to Alberton was the commander of the ship, who was Alfred the Duke of Edinburgh, second son of Queen Victoria. Mr Rose, the sexton, whilst engaged in digging in the cemetery in 1870, uncovered a bundle of old banknotes issued by private banks buried in the earth. These were handed to a clergyman who had them placed in a bank vault, where they were forgotten. Thirty years later they were rediscovered, and with the original owner still unidentified, those which hadn't crumbled into scraps of paper were divided up between the descendants of the sexton. In November 1888, a fire consumed one and a half acres of tall grass in the cemetery also destroying a grave and the fence surrounding it, before neighbours beat it out, while in March 1911 another fire began in the long grass, which caused damage to fences and tombstones, before the Port Adelaide Fire Brigade were able to extinguish it. As early as 1903, newspapers were saying the old cemetery had been an eyesore for years. Although the cemetery became neglected, for years, and prickly pear and box thorn overran it, it was not until 1927 that a newspaper, the Mail, had a front page story which revealed that local children had got into the habit of playing in the old cemetery. Some of the children found a way into one of the old crypts and removed human bones to play with. The coffins of John and Eliza Snoswell who died in 1855 and 1874, respectively, had been broken open and their bones removed by the inquisitive children. A worker from nearby Wadlow Timber Mill reported seeing a child playing with a human skull. The timber mill was newly constructed at the time, having been built on prickly pear-covered waste ground next to the cemetery. 
Within the confines of the cacti, local men had formerly found hidden pathways through to a clearing in the midst of the thorny bushes where they could spend time gambling, away from the prying eyes of the law. In another section of the cemetery, branches from a cypress tree were placed over the railings of a tomb to create a makeshift playhouse. On another visit in 1931, members of the council found that children were still playing with human remains and that gravestones had been used as targets for shotguns. Following that inspection, the cemetery was cleared of overgrowth in 1932, paid for by public subscription. Although it quickly grew back and in 1936 further tidying was necessary, done for the centenary of the state of South Australia by Port Adelaide Council. After the council took control of the cemetery in 1936, it was again in a bad state. By 1939, only 25% of the gravestones were legible and only half a dozen graves were maintained by relatives of the deceased. While most of the gravestones were neglected, many broken into fragments, there was one grave without a headstone, which in 1927 was being cared for behind a white picket fence. A woman in black would visit the cemetery twice a week to place flowers upon the grave. It is believed of her family members. The gravestone of the MacDonald family was described as having a roof over the top to keep the weather off and iron bars to protect it from other intrusion. It's gone now, but a plaque exists with some of the same information in a corner of the cemetery, relating the link between the MacDonald family and the Battle of Culloden, where the forces of King George crushed the Highlanders, attempting to restore the Stuarts to the throne. Neglected for decades, and now hidden away, many people aren't even aware that Alberton Pioneer Park exists still forgotten in the dark corners of history.